And I do want to get to the Heat, though, who did go down in five, and they certainly put up a fight, right, guys, throughout the series, but they are Ooh. left with so many questions. Not everybody. <laughs> Number one, of course, Dwayne Wade. Um, his future. There's also though the big picture because Miami doesn't have a lot of flexibility to improve the rest of its roster this offseason. Take a look here. The Heat don't own their draft pick this year. They'll begin free agency already at projected 20 million over the salary cap. And their best mechanism to sign a free agent outside of their own is likely going to be the taxpayer mid-level exception, wow. which the English translation of that means their projected starting salary for the one slot they have is $5.4 million, which does not buy you a transformative superstar. Star. So I, I don't know. What do you guys think is the number one priority there for the Heat? In my opinion, you, you got to resign D Wade if he wants to play. He, he, he has to go out of Miami Heat. I, I mean, if he says I want to play one more year, you got to resign him. Uh, that, that's the right thing to do. I, I think the second thing is they have to sit down, Eric Strosser and Pat Riley have to sit down with Whiteside and talk to this young man and tell him, number one, grow up, call all this crying out about <laughs> your playing time and this and that and understand that it's sometimes you're not going to play 30 minutes a game because of matchups. Sometimes you, it, it has nothing to do with how you're playing. But some of the statements he's made throughout the playoffs just shows his immaturity. You got to grow up, man. You, you in the NBA. To me, that stands for no boys allowed. Yeah. Oh, so grow right. up. Oh, Be a man and accept what's going on. And you can only change it by going out there and doing the very best you, you can. I know Pat Riley ain't sitting there going, you know, oh, you know, he, he's been great. We, we, not, we don't have to sit down and talk. No, we got to talk to this young man. Rachel, we, we're I, not going to have I, this I, next I'm year. I'm really, I was disappointed in White Side, honestly. You know, the first two, first couple games, I just thought it was a bad matchup, you know, mm -hmm. because they spread the floor. He can't no, be out indeed, on the perimeter yeah. guarding those guys. But when MB came back, I said on the show, this will really favor yeah. uh, Miami Heat because I thought White Side would be engaged. I thought he would be locked in. And he showed me the total opposite of mm -hmm. that, his lack of energy. Just like he wasn't interested. You played 10 minutes, but this is game five. If the coach don't see signs of you wanting to be out there, your energy level, of course he's, he's got to pull you. This is a you know, win yeah, or, or, or die better, situation, yeah. right? So I was very disappointed in him as far as you know, what they should, the Miami Heat should do. They need to score. It's just well, that flat. It's just that simple. They really need to address finding the score and how they do that. I was going to say one that can beat you off the dribble. Yeah. It's going to cost some money. This is this is hard, and the white side <laughs> problem cost some money. is hard too. By the way, because he does have that huge salary, and he has not sold himself. It's not just the Miami Heat who he hasn't sold himself to since he signed that deal. It's not like the rest of the league is going to be like, yes, I want to, I want to make a trade with you guys and gobble up a guy who like can't even stay on the court, and you're paying him all it's, this money. It, it's I, so disappointing to see. A guy in his contract year, he plays his butt off. But it's like now, where's that fire? He's relaxed. He's too comfortable. Like, I need to see that same that, fire before you got that contract. Uh, hey, Trey, you've seen this in this league a, a, a I have. million times. Guys get their contract and they, they, they fat and happy. All right, well, you know Pat Riley better than almost anyone, and you have been in all of these positions. You've been a player. You've been a coach. What do you do when he sits down in that room with Hassan Whiteside? What, what do you say to him to change the outcome for next season? Because it will be hard to find a trade partner. I don't know what you say. I know the first thing you say is, look, we're going to be straight up in this room. We're going to be honest with each other, and we're going to tell you exactly how we feel about you as a player and as a person. We're going to tell you exactly what we need you to do as a person and as a player on this basketball court. And then you have dialogue, you know, and, and both sides got to come out feeling that, look, we did everything we could to make sure we got our point across and we listened to you as a player, get your point across, and now we got to find that happy medium. You know, because he is a big part of their organization. There's no doubt about that. They wouldn't have put that much money into him if they didn't think he was uh, uh, going to be a great player, you know, for a long period of time. So now how do you figure out where we can coexist? And if you can't, like you said, you're not going to have 20 teams sitting around trying to figure out how do I get white side to my side because <laughs> it ain't happening. You know what I'm saying?